might have it. I might have it. I might Here have it. Here we go. It. You can do it. You can do it. Got it. Finally. Jesus. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another Reality Skewed Gamers video. I am Finity, and right now I know there's a lot of you struggling with the Padme event and just trying to get her unlocked. Well, this video is going to go through how me and also Ranger, if you caught him on uh, the live stream that we did for the Padme event, used a team without Grievous, Stortica, or B1 in order to get Padme unlocked. Now, the team that we used is Asajj, Dooku, Sunfak, Geospy, and B2. Now, there is some RNG involved, and we'll talk about what those RNG factors are. We'll take a look at how these teams work together, why we pick these characters, how you want to kind of mod them, and what you're looking for. And then we'll take a look at what I did in order to beat Tier 5 and how all of that RNG came together. So first, let's take a look at how we modded the characters and what the stats are for all of the different characters we used. So first, let's take a look at Asajj. Now, Asajj right now I have modded for crit damage. Now, this was the build that I was using when I did the attack. Now, ideally, if you are going to be using this uh, team and you are trying to remod, I would suggest using more offense on Asajj Ventures. And the reason is, if you take a look at her unique, her unique gives all of these different abilities based on the ally or the enemy being defeated, the problem is one of these things is crit chance and without Night Sister Zombie on the team, you are not ramping up Asajj as quickly as you were. And so overall, your damage is actually going to be higher if you do an offense set with a crit dam damage triangle. When you use her on a Night Sister team though, a crit damage set ends up being better because she ramps up a lot quicker because of Night Sister Zombie and keeps on getting that critical chance. So. One thing you might want to change from the modding I have, I didn't want to really remod Asajj Ventress. Um, one of the things you can do is mod her for more offense with the offense set, offense secondaries, and then also use a crit damage triangle. Now, I used her in the leader ability because what I wanted was more speed on Asajj. Now, I'll talk about in a second why I wanted more speed on her, but when you put her in the lead ability, all Night Sisters, which is just her, for this team, gain 30 speed, 30% offense, and they also gain the turn meter whenever they fall below 50%, or whenever they fall below 100% health. And that comes into play every now and then, it does become helpful. Um, she won't really be gaining turn meter when Padme is there, right? So Padme is going to kind of prevent all of this. But more important is the speed and the offense, as well as the chance to remove turn meter. So all of these kind of come together to, to the reason why I think Asajj lead makes it a little bit better than Dooku, um, who we'll talk about in a second. But the reason why I wanted a fast Asajj is because of her basic. Her basic has a chance to stun. Now this stun becomes really critical because it really prevents a lot of the different abilities from being used by the Padme team, which is Padme, Jedi Knight, Anakin, Mon Calamari, and uh, General Kenobi. So when you can start getting these stuns off, and of course there's a little bit of RNG, it's a 50% chance to hit the stun, plus you're going against the potency tenacity aspect. If you can get these stuns to land, then you are in good shape. Now in terms of the scope of RNG and the different things you're looking for, this one is probably a little bit lower on the list in terms of things you worry about. Because you you should be able to get the stuns off a lot of times, and I'll show you the stats on my Asajj, but you should be able to get the stuns off pretty well on her. So here are her stats. Her health and protection are not really anything crazy. Again, these are my standard mods on Asajj. She's definitely more catered towards damage. Her speed, she has plus 88 speed from her secondaries on that crit damage set, which puts her at 192 plus. Now I'm putting her in the leader ability, so she gains another 30. So now she's above 200. She is focused on crit damage, as I mentioned. So she has 222 crit damage. And then when you go down and you look at her damage, she's now at uh, almost 3000 damage helps with the multipliers, puts everything together. So this is kind of the way that I worked on Asajj. Again, if you guys are looking to remod Asajj, I would recommend an offense set with the crit damage triangle, again, because her rampage really doesn't get ramped up with this team because there is no Night Sister zombie. One thing about her rampage though, 
you do need Asajj to survive until the end of the match. She is going to end up being your main damage dealer, especially when you get to the end, because at the end, she is going to be the last Separatist that usually remains. And by that time, you're going to have your team dead, you're going to have their team also dying, and then the Rampage starts to go up. And that's when you'll really see the effect of Asajj. So early game, you do have to, and we'll talk about the strategy, burn down Padme. She's going to be more effective with offense set, but more important is that late game, that Rampage is actually going to start kicking in a little bit. Let's talk about the next character, which is Dooku. So Dooku also has a lead ability, and I know several of you have used Dooku as the lead, and it has worked, and it'll, it can definitely work. Now, the thing about Dooku, Dooku is a evasion lead, which means that this is contributing to another aspect of RNG. You're hoping that things will evade. Now, you can go this route. This will definitely work as well. I got pretty close on a few attempts when I was doing this, but I realized that I really wanted the speed on Asajj in order to get more of those stuns off. Um, but the other thing that Dooku provides is offense up for your entire team. So you are able to get more damage output. So either one of these, if you want to try it, see which one is works better for your team. For me, I definitely enjoyed the uh, Asajj team. It felt like it was more controlled. Um, in the stream that I mentioned before that Ranger did, Ranger also used the Asajj lead. And that seemed to be the one that worked for him in order to beat the event. So I would still suggest Asajj lead. Now... The other part of Dooku that's really important is his base is his special. Now his special gives you a chance to stun. Again, this is all coming back, right? There's certain things we're looking for for this team to make sure that it works. And a stun is one of those things. Now when you can get the stun on the separatist, that's going to make it so from the separatist onto the Padme team. You will then be able to control the matchup. So Padme is not going to be able to go crazy. Anakin won't be able to go crazy. That's what really helps to keep this match under control. The other aspect is the shock from this. Now, initially, I focus fully on Padme to try and burn her down. The shock can be put on General Kenobi, but there's a few other things you can do in order to compensate for the General Kenobi. Now, here is the downfall of Dooku and this is something you're going to have to watch for and this is also going to be part of the RNG of this. That is Dooku's basic and that ties in with his unique. Now the reason I bring this up is because Dooku and let me go to his unique instead. Dooku has counter attack. Now I don't have him leveled up to, to eight. I don't have the Zeta on him so mine is just seven but when you take a look at the seven you will see that he has a hundred percent counter chance. And the 100% counter chance works against you in this event. And that's because of Padme's Unique. Padme's Unique makes it so that whenever an enemy attacks out of turn, whoever the uh, character attacks is going to gain protection up. And if Padme is a leader, which she is in this event, they will gain 40% protection up, which is 40% of their health. Dooku has a 100% counter chance. So every time he attacks gets attacked, he is going to attack back and he is going to cause protection up. Now, here's the RNG aspect. When Dooku counterattacks, you want him to counterattack everyone except Padme. There is your RNG. How can he attack everyone besides Padme? Well, if Anakin attacks, he attacks Anakin. You're fine in the early portion. If the Calamari attacks early and attacks Dooku, you are fine. Dooku's going to counterattack and put protection up on the Calamari. You're not worried about that. If Kenobi has taunt, then all of the counterattacks are going to Kenobi. You are not worried about that. The one thing you are concerned about is if Padme gets attacked and gets the protection up. That's where things can start to go bad really quickly. Because the number one goal in terms of the strategy is burning down Padme. So that's what you're going to be looking for. Now let's take a look at the stats of Dooku. You'll see that I have him modded with the speed set. But even when you look at his stats, he's not crazy modded for speed. He's pretty straightforward, right? These are just simple mods. I don't have anything crazy on him. I know Asajj's was a little bit higher because of 88 speed secondary with the crit damage set. I know that's a little bit higher than a lot of people are able to put out, but that's fine, right? You don't have to go anything crazy. Asajj is going to be your damage dealer. Dooku, I don't really have anything special on. I mean, he has uh, an additional 500 damage on his physical damage, but I mean, he's not he's not modded anything crazy, and I think a lot of you guys will be able to replicate these kind of stats on your Dooku. 
Then we go to Sunfac. These other characters all have a simple purpose. We're going to go through these pretty quick because there's not really much that gets involved with this. The RNG aspect of Sunfac, you can't have Sunfac die early and Sunfac needs to get his taunt off. Those are the two critical things for Sunfac. As long as Sunfac can taunt, because you want him to be your meat shield, and he is not uh, buff immunity or anything before he gets his taunt off, and uh, definitely not killed, then your Sunfac is serving exactly his purpose. You want him to be the meat shield. So you'll see that I put defense sets on him. These are my mods effectively from my uh, Sith Trooper that I have on him. Um, his health protection, nothing really crazy, but I do have a high amount of armor on him because I'm reducing the damage he takes from the different attacks. So there's a couple of different ways you can mod him in order to be that meat shield. You can put him high on defense, you can increase his health, you can increase his protection. Whatever you want, make him tanky. That is the key that you're looking for. You want him to be tanky, you want to take those hits. That's what you want. Now, the other part that you're looking for is his basic. Now, his basic dispels. That is the other key to this. Padme has three different ways of providing protection up. The one from her unique, you can't do anything about. But the one from her basic and the one from her special, those ones you can get rid of. And so this is where Sunfac ends up being really useful. The other part the dispel gets useful, you can dispel the taunt off of Kenobi. So if somebody attacks Sunfac and Sunfac counterattacks, he can dispel the taunt off of Kenobi, leaving you the ability to attack Padme again. So there is your RNG aspect with regards to Sunfac. The next character, Geo Spy. Now Geo Spy is critical because of his special. Now his special allows you to dispel. Again, we're seeing certain things that we're looking for, right? We're looking for stuns. We're getting that from Dooku. We're getting that from Asajj. We're looking for dispelling. We're getting that from Sunfac. Now we're getting that from Geo Spy. So Geo Spy here, you can see, even without, I don't have his level 8. It's only level 7. Simple. You get the ability to dispel. You can dispel protections. You can dispel taunt. Leaves you a lot of abilities. That's what you're looking for. And then lastly is B2. So if you look at all of their gears, my Asajj was gear 12, my Dooku was 11, my Sunfac was 11, my Geospy was 11, but B2? B2 is gear 9. So nothing crazy with the gear, nothing really crazy with the mods, right? We'll take a look at his stats. Again, nothing crazy on health, nothing crazy on protection. What I modded him for, though, was tenacity because I did not want my B2 to get stunned. That is going to be the key. I don't want my B2 getting stunned. I don't want him getting dazed. I don't want anything with him. He is going to be tenacity based with also, and this you guys may not, you might have some of these, an accuracy arrow. I don't want him missing. I don't want him dodging. I want him hitting. So this is what I modded my B2 for. Nothing crazy with the mods again. So you can see he's just plus 20 speed. He doesn't need a lot of speed. He gains full turn meter when other characters get attacked. He's high on tenacity. That's what I focused on. Nothing crazy with the damage. His purpose is really simple. Buff immunity and dispelling. Now, some of the other characters you guys may have and the reason why I wouldn't suggest it. Geo Soldier is the other one that a lot of you may have and would consider using. Now, my Geo Soldier is gear 11, but I did not use him. Here is the reason why I didn't use him. His special calls to assist anybody, right? It'll call to assist uh, an ally. The problem is again Padme's unique. So if your initial goal is to get Padme down as quickly as possible, which is what your strategy should be, this ability is going to give Padme extra protection. So effectively, Geo Soldier is going to be relegated to just using his basic for the entirety of the beginning of the match. Until Padme is down, Geo Soldier is only going to be able to use his basic because otherwise you're going to force protection up on Padme. That's going to make it so Padme is going to be killed slower. So don't bother with Geo Soldier. Geo Soldier is not going to provide you anything that you really need at the beginning of the match. And the goal is to kill Padme as soon as possible. So let's look at the battle and go through it and you'll see how the RNG kind of plays out with this. And it's a pretty simple RNG. So this should be something that you can replicate with a few tries. Okay, so you see the battle starting off. We have our Kenobi and everything moving along. Now, first off, Anakin does his AoE. We got the counterattacks on Anakin. We're fine. We're dispelling all of the protections. Our Sunfac is still up. He doesn't have any buff immunity. He's getting attacked, but he's still going. We're focusing on Padme. 
right? Everything is focusing on Padme. Using a basic here, we got an attack on Sunfac, still no issue. Now we got the Sunfac taunt. Now that's where I want to make sure that you guys all see it. The key, again, first RNG aspect, you get the taunt on Sunfac. If he doesn't get the taunt, you're going to find it really difficult to get this going because you need to have him as the meat shield. The other characters are all going to be taking damage slowly, but if they get focus fire on, they're gone. Sunfac needs to be the one that gets all of the damage taken. So we see this continuing now. We're focusing on Padme. We got a stun on Padme, preventing everything. Look at how Padme is not getting that special protection up. Dooku is not counterattacking her. We're also now putting a buff immunity on Kenobi. So we don't want Kenobi taunting. Protection up is getting on Anakin. We don't care, right? So we are focusing. Now, the reason I'm focusing on the Calamari right now and, and looking to see what to do is because I can see I have other turn meter coming, right? So I know that I can get my Padme. Kenobi had a uh, buff immunity. So I'm still focusing. Padme is down. Now I can focus on either Anakin or the Calamari. You can see now I'm focusing on the Calamari. My Sunfac, despite having buff immunity, still has his taunt up, right? Now Anakin can't dispel any of the buffs because Padme is not around. That's part of his overwhelming assault. He dispels if Padme is there. Padme is gone. No more dispelling of Sunfac. Quick kill of Padme is the key. Look how this is all playing out now, right? Asajj now has a buff from Padme dying. So now you can see her rampage is slowly getting up. You'll see that her damage slowly starts to increase. I'm checking here the Mon Calamari, the Jedi Master Guardian, because his special, again, only works on allies, which means that Padme is not coming back, right? So I can focus on the Calamari. If I focus on Anakin, which sometimes you may have to do depending on what their healths are, he will die and then the Calamari will bring him back up. But at that point, Asajj is gaining a bonus. So right now, my, my Geo Spy is dead, my Sunfac is dead. They have served their purpose. Now I have the Calamari down, which means no more reses. So now it's coming down to Asajj and B2. But Asajj is getting ramped up. Look at that. She just took out Anakin. She is powered up. The one thing you have to worry about moving forward, you can keep seeing it. Kenobi keeps on getting that stupid foresight. But you got the stun. You see why all of these things start to piece together, and this is how you beat this event. Again, certain key pieces of RNG. Your Sunfact taunts, your Dooku doesn't counterattack Padme, and you kill Padme first. Those are the three things you need to make sure that you can beat this event. If you guys have any questions, hop in the RSG Discord. We're there. There is RNG associated with it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is a hard event. You saw that it required a gear 12, three gear 11s, and a gear 9. So this isn't just a cakewalk, right? You don't need anything crazy with the mods. You saw my mods. My mods were not crazy except for maybe Asajj. Asajj had a lot of damage with speed and all of that. But this is why I worked with this team and why I saw this worked well. So again, if you guys have any questions, hop in the RSG Discord, message me, Finity. Um, you can also go back to the uh, Padme event that we have, and you can see Ranger, all of his attempts, and he used this team in order to beat it as well. So you can see all of the lead up, all of his mods as well on how he beat it. And I'll put a link into the description here where you can go directly to the timestamp where that event begins for him. So with that, I am Infinity with Reality Skewed Gamers. Good luck guys on your Padme event and we'll see you next time.